What's up, you Sigma the Bluffers? Welcome back to another episode. In this one, I'm at Deuces to play cash game session. Hopefully, there's a lot of action. Let's get in there. Let's go. All right, let's go. I buy in for the max. 400 bucks. Let's play some cards. Before we get into the action, you know it. Please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Drop me a comment if you think I played a hand well or poorly. And subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much. Kicking things off with this hand, I put out the $5 button straddle. Big blind raises to 15. Action folds to me and I peel a six suited. I decide to mix things up a bit here and three bet to 45. The big blind makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of ace, nine, jack, two diamonds. Big blind checks to me. I see bet for 65. My opponent thinks for almost a full minute before making the call. The turn is the three of clubs and the big blind checks once again. I hesitate between betting again and checking. I want to avoid value cutting myself against a bigger ace, but there's also a bunch of strain and flush draws I want to protect against. I fire a second bullet for 150 and the big blind folds. In this one, we're playing a double board five card PLO bomb pot. Six of us see a flop of ace, nine, king, two clubs on top, eight, six, five, rainbow on bottom. I look down at ace, king, nine, eight, four in middle position. I flop top two pair and a backdoor nut flush draw on top, a pair of eights and a gut shot stray draw on bottom. Action checks to the cutoff who bets 20, under the gun calls, and I make the call as well. The turn comes a six of diamonds on top, king of hearts on bottom. I pick up the nut flush draw on top and I make two pair on bottom. Action checks to the cutoff for a second time and they bet 80 bucks. Under the gun folds, and while I'm not particularly strong at this point in the hand, I have a lot of outs to make some straights, flushes, and full houses, so I make the call. Heads up to the river, which comes a jack of spades on top, seven of hearts on bottom. Nothing changes on top, but I do make a nine height straight on bottom. I check for a third time and the cutoff bets pot for 204. I'm looking at bottom board thinking I only lose to a 10 high straight if my opponent has 10 nine, but there's two nines accounted for, one on top, one in my hand. For that reason, I decide to make a pretty thin call. And that's when I realized that the seven on bottom completed the heart flush. And of course, my opponent has the nut flush on bottom along with the set of aces to beat my two pair on top. I get scooped and I'm stuck almost 300 bucks early in this session. There's a couple of big stacks at the table and there's a lot of action, so I add on for another 200 bucks. In this one, I straddle to five from the button. Two players call before I look down at ace four. And once again, I'm going to go the aggressive route here and race to 20. Only the big blind makes the call, so we go heads up to a flop of 376 rainbow. Big blind checks to me. I'm going to throw out a C bet of 25 like I would do with my over pairs, and the big blind makes the call. The turn comes another seven, and the big blind checks for a second time. I don't think this is a great card to keep firing, so I decide to check back. The river comes the eight of diamonds, putting three diamonds on the board. Big blind checks for a third time. Is Asi good here? Not sure. This board does favor the big blind a lot more than me, but I decide to take a stab at it, see if I can get my opponent to fold. I bet 65, and after about 10 seconds, the big blind makes the call with 5-8 for a flopped open ender that rivered top pair. In this one, I straddle to five from under the gun. Middle position restraddles to 10. The hijack calls the 10 before I look down at ace six. I'm stuck and anxious to get involved in a pot, so I decide to make the call and middle position checks their option. We go three ways to a flop of seven king deuce, two diamonds and action checks around. The turn comes to five of diamonds, giving me the nut flush draw. I'm going to bet 20. The middle position player makes the call and the hijack folds. Heads up to the river. A diamond would be nice. It's the three of diamonds, nice, I river the nuts. I get a little bit greedy here, but I know my opponent is capable of making some pretty light river calls. I bet 60, almost a full pot bet. My opponent thinks for a while before making the call. I show him the bad news and take down the pot. In this hand, I put out the $5 button straddle. Three players make the call and I look down at ace seven off suit. I'm happy to check it back and see a flop for free. Four ways to a flop of ace, king, eight, two hearts. Small blind leads for 10. There's a fold and a call. And once again, I decide to mix things up a little bit and raise to 40 and the small blind snap calls. Rest of the table folds, so we go heads up to the turn and it's a beautiful one. It's the seven of diamonds giving me two pair. Small blind checks to me, same opponent as the hand before. I know they like to call light. So when I turn top two here, I'm pretty much trying to play for stacks. 
I bet 90 small blind tanks for about a minute before calling. Hoping for a clean river is the six of spades, small blind checks, and I go all in for 232. My opponent goes into the tank for another minute before making the call. I announce two pair, small blind says two pair is good, and I pick up a massive pot, and I am now unstuck and up 100. In this one, we're playing a double barrel, also known as Big O, Bomb Pot. Pot is split between the best high and the best low. Seven of us see a flop of Deuce 5 Ace, all clubs on top, King 4 5, Rainbow on bottom. I flop the Nut Low on top, Ace Deuce 3 4 5, and as far as the high hand is concerned, I also flop a flush with my 10 6 of clubs, which happens to be the third nuts with the Ace and the King already accounted for. Using my nut low as leverage, I want to try and scoop this pot, I bet 25, and I get called by the cutoff and the button. Three ways to the turn, which comes a 9 on top and 8 on bottom. Nothing changes, I still got the nut low and the third nut flush. It's a little thin, but I take one more stab at trying to take this pot down, I bet 100, almost a full pot bet. I get snap called by the cutoff. The button tanks for about a minute before raising pot for 510. I've played enough double barrel to know that at least one of my opponents also has the nut low and it would be pretty lucky if my third nut flush ended up being good and that's if neither board pairs on the river. I make a reluctant fold and that leads the cutoff to make the call. Both players are all in and going to the river which comes a deuce on top and a four on bottom so both boards end up pairing. The button shows two eights for a rivered full house and as expected the cutoff shows three four for the nut low. Not too happy about my thin value bet on the turn, but I'll pat myself on the back for making the fold, avoid getting quartered, and losing another 300 bucks or so. In this one, I straddle to five from the button, big blind and under the gun make the call, and I look down at pocket queens, first premium of the night, let's go. I three bet to 40, big blind is the only player to make the call, so we go heads up to a flop of ace, four, three, all hearts. Big blind checks to me, I check to see if I have a heart, I don't and I decide to check back and reevaluate on the turn. The turn comes to five of clubs. When the big blind checks for a second time, I think I can start going for some thin value. I bet 40 and my opponent folds before I can even put the chips out. In this one, there's a $5 button straddle. Both blinds make the call. I look down at ace king offsuit in the cutoff. I raise to 25, button calls and the small blind three bets to 120. It looks like they have about 250 behind. I'm going to go the straightforward route here and 4-bet all in. The button folds and the small blind makes the call. They show pocket queens. There's close to 800 bucks in the middle and it's the classic flip. Ace-king versus queens. We agree to run it twice and so we go heads up to board number 1 which comes 5-4-6. Turn is a 7. I'm going to need an ace or a king to win. We can also chop with a 3 or an 8 which would put a straight on the board. But the river comes a 10 and so my opponent wins the first half of the pot going to board number two which comes three king jack i take the lead turn is a nine which gives my opponent some extra outs they can now win with the river queen or 10. the river is another jack and i'm going to take down the other half of the pot that was a nice little hand to get the adrenaline pumping Glad we run it twice, otherwise I would be back in the hole after clawing my way out. In this one, I'm on the button with the $5 straddle. There's a limb from under the gun before middle position raises to 15. Low jack calls, cutoff calls. I look down at 9-8 suited. No need to go crazy here. I'm happy to take this hand multi-way and under the gun comes along. We go six ways to a flop of 10, 10, 5, two clubs. Action checks all the way around to me. With nine high and a flush draw, I'm going to bet 45. The cutoff is the only player to make the call. Cutoff is a friend of the channel who bluffed me last week and I swore to get revenge, so let's see if we can make it happen. Heads up to the turn, which comes a jack of clubs giving me the flush. Even better, the cutoff leads into me for 50 and they have about 150 behind. With the board being paired, I'm a tiny bit concerned that I could be up against the boat, but I also want to protect my hand and get max value in case my opponent has the ace of clubs. I guess calling and going all in are both acceptable options, but again, I'm going to go the aggressive route and put my opponent all in. I don't get snap called, which is great, and after thinking for about 30 seconds, my opponent makes the call. The river comes a brick. I show my flush. 
Cutoff shows 10-4 for flop trips. My revenge is complete. Last end of the vlog, this is actually the very next shuffle. I'm still stacking my chips when I pick up Ace-King offsuit in the cutoff. Under the gun one opens up the action to 17. Hijack makes the call and I'm going to put in a three bet to 50. Both players make the call. We go three ways to a flop of Jack, Eight, Seven, Two Spades. Action checks to me and on this board versus two players, I'm going to check back. Turn is interesting, it's the four spades giving me the nut flush draw. Action checks to me for a second time. I'm going to fire a bet of 110, which gets under the gun one player to fold, but the hijack, my opponent from the previous hand, goes all in for 150. I should have paid attention to their stack because now I don't really have any other option but to call. Thankfully, I'm not on a total bluff. Unfortunately, the river is a complete break and the hijack shows pocket sevens for a flop set. Nice little back and forth there with this player as we trade two pots back to back. I bought in for 400 bucks, got stuck early in the session and added on for 200, so I was in for a total of 600. My stack peaked to around 850 before losing that last pot. I ended up cashing out for 610, booking a massive profit of $10. A win's a win, I'll take it. This concludes this episode. As always, if you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you hit that thumbs up button, drop a comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching, good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.